Lincoln, Nebraska, TBS Saturday College Football, presented by Orbitz, kicks off now. And it's a battle of undefeateds here in the Big 12, 13th ranked Texas Tech and the Cornhuskers from Nebraska, both four and four. Hello, everybody. This is Bob Neal along with Tom Ramsey. Kip Lewis will be on the sideline for us today. It's homecoming here in Lincoln, and Nebraska has won their last 36 homecoming games. Might not be so easy today. As a matter of fact, last year down in Lubbock, Texas, the Texas Tech Red Raiders won 70 to 10, Nebraska's worst loss ever. And for Texas Tech, still playing great offense, but this year Nebraska's defense playing very well too, Tom. Well, they sure are, Bob. And this high-flying offense of Mike Leach, they can put up points immediately. 70 points a year ago against Nebraska. They're still doing it this year. They're averaging over. Over 57 points, 450 yards in pass offense. Those are both number one in the nation. But this 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 Nebraska defense is awfully tough. Second in the nation in scoring defense, only nine points a game. They lead the country in sacks with 26. Think about this. They only had 25 sacks all of last year. So look for those defensive ends to come off the edge. Yeah, look out, Cody Hodges. And by the way, people think there may be 100 passes thrown in this game. It's an air show here at Lincoln, Nebraska. And speaking of the air, here is the weather information for you. It's as close to a perfect day as possible. 65 degrees, 49 percent humidity. Winds from the north at 10 to 15. However, the wind swirls down at field level. Could be a factor at one point or another during the day. And the forecast is clear. 65 should be the high temperature for the day. Another sold out game here, Bob. In Nebraska and we are underway Todd Walker is hit by Bo Davis and Texas Tech will get things underway at their 15 yard line. Here is Cody Hodges leading the nation in total offense. Second in passing. He really gets it done. This is a spread offense meaning that he'll be throwing the ball at will. Often you'll see four receivers on the field and of course the H back is also a receiver as is the running back. So uh, five and six receivers eligible for passes every down here from Memorial Stadium first down 10 Texas Tech out to the 25 yard line goes Joe Filani and he's hit by Tier Green. Here's the line for Texas Tech. Glenn January, a really good one at left tackle. E.J. Whitney, the left guard, is a senior leader, and the center is Jones. Here are the defensive backs, or the offensive backs, Torrey and Henderson for Texas Tech. Across the middle, it is complete, out to the 45-yard line. And that is Joel Filani again. So already Texas Tech moving the ball, a gain of 21. And, and this Tech offense, Bob, they'll spread you out all over the field. Filani just coming across on a dig route, does a nice job. Hodges spinning it in there, keeping it nice and low for the completion. First and 10 from the 46-yard line, Red Raiders. Undefeated 4-0. They score a point a minute, nearly 57 points a game. Here's the first running play. This is Torian Henderson. Not much this time, out to about the 47-yard line before he is knocked down by Cody Glenn, number 34. Make that Stuart Bradley the linebacker. And here are the defensive linemen. Kevin Smith is tough. The linebackers, Corey McEwen, is all over the field. He plays middle linebacker, but he roams all over out there. Courtney Grixby at the corner. Tierra Green, a former running back at the other corner, will be tested. Daniel Bullock is their big hitter. Cody with a lot of time, not much pressure. Can't find anybody, finally does. It's complete to Henderson inside Nebraska territory near the 40-yard line. Hodges does a great job. Mike Leach loves Hodges' feet, Bob. And right there, he keeps alive in the pocket, gets flushed out. McEwen there to put some pressure on him. Henderson, he's finding the outlet receiver. Good for a first down into Nebraska territory. 
Again, not much of a pass rush. Pass released out to the left side to Henderson, and he gets near the first down mark. He stayed in bounds. Henderson, touchdown, Texas Tech. 24-yard touchdown catch and run by Torian Henderson. Looked like he stepped out of bounds out there at about the 20, but he stayed in and took it into the end zone. It did, Bob. They knew they had him in man coverage. All of a sudden, Torian Henderson sneaks out on a screen, and Hodges delivered the ball, and he did not step out. Boy, that's a good call. Referee right there on the spot, but look at him run. Ends up weaving through defenders, getting in the corner of the end zone for the first score of the game. Andrelica with the extra point. It's 7-0 Texas Tech, and they have done it in 3 minutes and 13 seconds, and that drive started at their own 15-yard line. Back at Memorial Stadium, Alex Trelick will be kicking off for the Texas Tech Red Raiders as they took it 85 yards in just over three minutes. Tier Green and Brandon Jackson will be deep for Nebraska. So while the Nebraska defense gets over the shell shock of the passing attack of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Nebraska's offense, which is pretty darn good themselves, will get a chance to see what they can do. Deep backs to Air Green, former running back. He's number 30. And 32, Brandon Johnson. It's Tier Green. He decided to touch it down and then changed his mind. Green out to the 22-yard line. Whoa, baby. It was Brandon Douglas made the tackle. And let's go down now to Kip Lewis. Kip. Well, guys, this is the first road game of the season for Texas Tech. And, you know, we we're wondering how were they going to handle the atmosphere here in this stadium. The majority of their players have never played here. I think that first drive answered any questions we had, guys. And I can tell you what, it's gotten awfully quiet in here real quick. Bob? Yeah, one of the things, of course, anybody who knows football knows that Nebraska needed to get their crowd in it early in this game, not out of it. So we'll see what the offense does here behind Zach Taylor. Set a school record for passing last week against Iowa State with 431 yards. Corey Ross carries the ball and gets a couple. And speaking of Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor wearing number 13. He's a junior from, ready for this, Norman, Oklahoma. <laughs> His dad played for the Sooners. One of the things I asked him yesterday is I said, I guess you've always dreamed for playing uh, about playing for Nebraska, right? That this would be <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> a little bit of an incongruity there. Here's a play fake. Zach Taylor with plenty of time. He goes over to the right side, and that is complete to the 43-yard line to 83, Terrence Nunn. Heck of a throw right there by Zach Taylor. Little bootleg. If you followed any bit of the West Coast offense, they love to fake run, come out the other side. Nice little boot. Zach Taylor, plenty of time, gets the ball down the field. Nice throw and catch that time. Terrence Nunn, one of the explosive Nebraska receivers. Last week, 36 of 55 for Taylor to 10 different receivers in the double overtime win over Iowa State. Taylor comes out to the left side this time. That's picked off. That is picked off at the 47-yard line by Khalid Narazuddin. Narazuddin might be Tech's best corner. Taylor unafraid to go out, but that's a long throw right there. That's all the way across the field. And the receiver, Narazuddin, just beats the receiver back to the ball. A great play that time. Neil Lyle Setsich, the defensive coordinator for Tech, told us what a great player. Nazaruddin is, and he studies those receivers in the offseason, and boy, that one paid off. Well, one of your keys to the game, Tom, was that Nebraska had to avoid the turnover early, and we already have that, and to get behind early, and they've already done that. Remember, they lost 70 to 10 to Texas Tech at Lubbock last year. Here is a handoff to Terry and Henderson. And Henderson gets inside Nebraska territory to about the 49-yard line. Wally Muhammad, number 55, came up to make the play. And Henderson, as, as Mike Leach said to us yesterday, the most versatile player he's ever coached. And Mike Leach has, has coached some great players. He's coached at some great schools. And Henderson right there, 
The NCAA active leader in TDs now with 56. And Mike Leach and the Red Raiders are making me a believer about this offense. They are explosive. Across the middle, it is complete. Short of the first down. Big hit put down there by TT. He hit Jared Hicks. But that's a gain of, they're going to give him nine. Just short of the first down. That was a great read and reaction by Blake Tiki, who earned a scholarship in the offseason. Coming out of spring ball, really did a nice job and took over the position. They're very happy with him. And that was just great reaction, keeping it second and short. But Tech, once again, driving. Second down, less than a yard. Still, they line up in the spread formation. It's complete for the first down to the 23-yard line to Brandon Douglas, number 11. He barely hung on to the ball, but give him credit. He did hang on to the ball. Junior. Just another in the arsenal of receivers Texas Tech has. And so far, what I'm most impressed, Cody Hodges really able to get the ball out early. Great reaction time, good quick feet. First down 10, just outside the 21 yard line. Quick toss once again, right in the middle to the 13 yard line goes Bristol Olamua. Olamua, who hadn't played the last couple of games very much, was struggling. But as we were told by Mike Leach yesterday, this guy can be a game breaker. They list him as a tight end. He's 6'5, 260. And that's going to wind the clock down to the end of the quarter as Texas Tech is knocking at the door once again. At the end of one, Texas Tech seven, Cornhuskers nothing. Seven nothing, Texas Tech, and the Red Raiders on the drive again. Red Raiders moving up and down the field. But only one touchdown which came on the first drive of the game, an 85-yard drive thrown across the middle. Into the end zone goes Filani, Joel Filani, and the second touchdown of the day for Texas Tech. How do you stop the Red Raiders? You can't make Coach. silly mistakes, number one, because right. they will eat you up, as you said, sideline to sideline, and then they go vertical on you. Right there, again, the ball just comes out of Hodge's hands. Super quick, not a chance for any sack. Very accurate to Filani that time. Another touchdown for Filani. He has four touchdowns on the year now. And by the way, Texas Tech has now scored 28 out of 28 times inside the red zone. Only three field goals, 25 touchdowns have been scored once the Red Raiders get inside the 20, and they lead it 14 nothing. And there is Cody Hodges, 14 of 17, 164 yards. How about this? Henderson has 21 yards receiving and 46 carrying the ball already today. For Lekka to kick off, it's Jackson and Green back deep. In and out of his hands and out of the end zone. And they'll take it out to the 20-yard line. It was Tier Green who couldn't hold on to it. Let's go down to Kip Lewis. Kip. Hey, guys, I want to show you something real quick. Usually when you're taught to throw the football, you put your hand on it, something like this. But next time Cody Hodges is out there, watch how he throws the football. Let me change hands here. He throws it with his thumb on the football. He does not use the laces. And, Tom, I guarantee you, they didn't teach you how to throw the football like that at UCLA, did they? No, they, they didn't. And I was talking to Chris Cook, their SID, before the game. I said, how does he do that? He said, well, in high school, he never had pass protection, so he just learned how to throw it quick. Here is Corey Ross for the first down. Look at his moves out there. Corey Ross all the way out to the 43-yard line. Sylvester Bradley got it. Well, there's one of Nebraska's playmakers right there, Corey Ross, number four. He will get busy. Nice little dump, little play action to it, then just a little dump. Nice safe throw, and then he does such a great job. Great vision, and he's just getting north and south. And what impressed us so much at practice the other day and watching him, great practice ethic. He catch the ball and run for 40 yards every he, time. Learning how to finish the play. 
Third down and long now. Zach Taylor's going to tuck it and run. Saldi's after him, broke the tackle, dives across the boundary, close to the first down. Nazaruddin was chasing him. Let's see if he's close enough for the first. What a play by Zach Taylor. Nice play by Taylor. They didn't spot where the ball went out. They spotted where his foot went out of bounds. Boy, he hangs in the pocket as long as he can, Bob. And then all of a sudden he breaks. Saldi right there, though, mirroring him. But he's able to shake shake Saldi. You see where, yeah, his knee touched down back there at the, uh, let's see, they'll put it at about the 32 yards line. So it'll be fourth and about two. Okay, put that ball up though. Let's see what uh, let's see what happens here. We get a we get a jumbo offensive set in there with some more blockers. Corey Ross in the game. They're going for it on fourth down. He's going to throw on fourth down. Incomplete. And the Cornhuskers on a fourth and two try to throw the ball. It was intended for Isaiah Fluellen. It hit the dirt before he could catch it. And Zach Taylor is now three for eight on the afternoon for only 54 yards. Well, in, in a way, I like the call because they're willing to throw a pass on fourth down, but they go against the best cover guy of Tech. But fourth down is an attitude play. Go get it on the ground. That's a trench play. Give it to number four. Give it to Corey Ross. Let him get it. Second down four from the 49 of Nebraska. Here's the handoff to Henderson. Cuts off right tackle between one of those wide splits. Gets up close to the first down. Daniel Bullock knocks him back. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down stick, which is at the 44-yard line. Well, this is where film study is a little misleading. I watched a lot of tech film the last several days, and i got to tell you, the offensive line, they, had, they, they went against Florida International, Sam Houston State, Indiana State. Then they got into Big 12 Conference play against Kansas. But i got to tell you, I expected them to push around Indiana State and Sam Houston State, but this is the corn hustle. This is third down and one in the middle of the field. Behind the center this time for Hodges. He's going to give it to Henderson to run again. Henderson breaks one tackle and two. Cuts across the grain. Drag down at the 18-yard line by Tier Green, but a blaze of speed from Henderson. Torian Henderson, short yarded situation. Everyone bunches up at the line of scrimmage. If you can bust it to the second level, right there he does, and then he just has a great cutback against the grain. Tierra Green, a former running back himself, trying to strip the ball away as he's taking him down. But Henderson, big play on third and one. With those 53 rushing yards and 46 in the air, he already has 99 total yards in this first half. Hodges, again, a lot of time to throw. Coming across the middle, he's got his man. Touchdown, Red Raiders, Joel Filani. 20 to nothing. Filani now with two catches out of the three. And how about these numbers? 16 of 19, 188, and two touchdowns. And, and look, he just runs a post, but the thing about it, at the top of the route, at the top of the, he stemmed him to the corner. Grixby got turned around, the ball right on time, a great throw by Hodges, second touchdown for Filani. And Courtney Grigsby tried to cover on the play. You saw on the replay, stumbled a bit. Not only can't you stumble, but you have to play perfect pass defense against this offense. Cody Hodges, 16 of 19, 188 yards, two touchdown passes. He's the nation's leader as a quarterback, and he's just building on it today. Matter of fact, he's going to run away there. 77,580,000 stunned fans here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Tier Green's going to just watch that one go in and out of the end zone, out to the 20. The Cornhuskers struggling to move the ball. They cannot keep the offense on the field. That helps this time. This is complete over on the far side for the first down to the 50-yard line. Goes Mark LaFleur, number nine. That was a 12-yard game for the first down. And, and, and you know, they really, I think the, the Nebraska faithful, Bob, 
they're not satisfied with last week. Zach Taylor, 431 yards, record-setting performance, 36 completions. I, I just think that they say, you know what? What have you done for me lately? Where are the first downs? Where are the points? We're losing 21 nothing, and and who would have thunk Tech would have just started where they left off a year ago down in Lubbock. I think Callahan feels good about what his offense can do in a short period of time, but you got to produce points. You got to put some on the first half here. They'd love to get a score on this drive. Zach now 5 of 11 for 84 yards on that one interception. Has a man wide open. That's Mulkey. Mulkey falling down across the first down marker. That'll be first down for Nebraska as they get to the 36 yard line of Texas Tech. Well, and they got the first down, but they're still putting a lot of pressure on Taylor. Hudler, number 93, finding a gap, but that's a well-thrown ball right there. He throws it in there very well. And what I liked most was him getting the first down. 21-0, Texas Tech with 7.40 to go in the first half. Taylor more successful on this drive. He has the Cornhuskers first down 10 at the 36 of Texas Tech. Across the middle, he's got a man open. It's complete near the first down marker. And that goes to Mark LaFleur. Took a tough hit down there, but he gets the ball down close enough, and it is a Cornhusker first down gain of 11. And so far in this drive, four of five for 53 yards. And before this drive, he's only three of eight for 54. A big third down facing the Huskers right now. And Corey Ross on the sideline with a slight lift will check on his conditions. Zach Taylor going out to the right side. And left side, it's complete. And that's to his former community college teammate, France Hardy. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers overcoming themselves to some degree for the first down. Yeah, France Hardy, they really, they, what they did, they singled him up on the far side of the field. And the sophomore out of Miami, Florida, and he did play with Zach Taylor at JC level, but right there, one on one, that was just a nice throw and a nice catch. Keeping the drive alive, first down now at the 14. Nebraska, by the way, only 11 of 17 in the red zone coming into this game. Down to about the 11 yard line goes Brandon Jackson. And again, Corey Ross is on the sideline. We don't know exactly what his status is, but when I saw him go off, he threw his helmet down, walked back to the back bench with a slight limp. So we'll check on him because he is the key of the offense, equally with Zach Taylor for Nebraska. Yes, he is. Third down and about seven. Taylor, incomplete. Flags come down, that'll be pass interference. That's the most flags we've ever seen on one play. And that was Huffman who got a throw. He was buried <laughs> under the yellow. Boy, four flags came out. They worked on this in practice the other day. Little zig, little zig out. And what Huffman tried to do right there was pattern read the play. He was expecting the ball to come out on Terrence Nunn, and he just ran right through Terrence Nunn. Holding defense, 41. That penalty is declined. Pass interference defense, number 36. That penalty is enforced. Spot foul, first down. Well, there you go. You had a defensive hold on Sylvester Brinkley, too, the Sam linebacker. And that'll put the ball at the six-yard line and gives Nebraska a new set of downs, trailing 21-0. And the biggest thing about this, in addition to Nebraska, of course, moving down to score, is they are keeping their defense and the Texas Tech offense off the field time. Yeah, so, so important. They finally were able to put a drive together, get some rhythm. And that's what, in this Bill Callahan offense, they, they're looking for that continuity. And you got to move the chains along the field. And Zach Taylor doing a nice job at the controls. They just can't turn the ball over anymore and have those silly penalties. So now 34, Cody Glenn is the setback. He'll get the carry. Nice cut, Glenn. Touchdown, Nebraska. That's Glenn's first 
career touchdown. Nice cut off the right side. Went in, cut to his right, and got the six. Another true freshman out of Rusk, Texas. Cody Glenn fighting his way over that time. Boy, I tell you, 6'0", 230 pounds. They keep growing him big. Here's Jordan Congdon, the freshman for the point after. He's missed one this year. Not this time. And now it's 21-7. So Nebraska not only kept the ball a long time, but they were able to get seven points out of the drive, pull to a respectable 21-7, and that might get them back in the game a little bit in terms of not having this thing roll downhill like a scuba. Taylor, by the way, that drive we were talking about, you were talking about how he looked sharper overall, five of nine for 68 yards. Shannon Woods, 21, and four, Todd Walker, are back for Texas Tech. Shannon Woods is a spectacular kick return. He doesn't get it, though. Walker does. Across the five, flipped into the air, short of the 20-yard line. That was Brandon Rigoni who came down to make the hit. And the noise becoming deafening here for Cody Hodges. Hodges waiting, waiting, lobbing up high, has nobody at home. It's incomplete, and the black shirt defense holds for the first time today. It's three and out for Texas Tech. Well, that time the crowd got back into it. They did bring blitz on third down that time, and this is where Nebraska is so dangerous, returning punts. Right now, back, Courtney Grixby averaging eight yards of return. Grixby, number two, standing on his own 40. Alex Ray is the punter. He's 12th in the nation at 44.8. Just outside the end zone line. That was nearly blocked. No flag down. Grixby at the 37. Spinning. To the 41-yard line of the Red Raiders. A 47-yard punt. A penalty marker comes down. After the play, personal foul number three on Texas Tech. 15-yard penalty. Oh, boy, baby. Boy, Dwayne Slay did just one of those dumb things. Standing over the pile, he ended up drilling a guy. And I think he drilled Tietke, of all people. And watch Tietke come from this side right here. Oh, he should have hammered that ball. I don't know how you don't block that one. Reyes had it on a platter. And then Grixby, nice return here. Spin move gets up to the 40, and then here comes Slay. Bop. You know what? It was the retaliation. That's it. You can never retaliate. You always get the flat. At the 29 now, first down, Nebraska. Short field for the Cornhuskers. It is complete at the 21 yard line to Franz Hardy. Well, there's that Franz Hardy, and, and Bob, when you ask Zach Taylor, do you have special chemistry with Franz Hardy? He said, yeah, you know what? I know where he's at a lot of the time. And right there, you see the pitch and catch. Franz Hardy on the year 15 for 216. Average a little over 14 yards carry, but right there, just a real steady receiver. Showed that number seven right to Zach Taylor. He put it right there. Second down to Corey Ross, back in for Nebraska. Play fake to Ross. They're going to pass it to him. Ross has a little running room. He's quick. He's elusive. He's to the six. Curry Ross hit by Dwayne Slay. And Nebraska first down goal. Corey Ross is hurting. Yeah, he is hurt. And if he's got a hip, watch. He does a little slip screen, lets the defender run right by him. And all of a sudden, he's the premier receiver. Gets down inside the 10, but Corey Ross, slow getting up. Needs help getting off the field. Yeah, he went right down on that left hip. So Nebraska, first down goal at the six into the eye formation. They're familiar with that here. And the handoff goes to Glenn. Glenn is met rudely at the line of scrimmage. I was just going to say, did, Dawson, did you say eye formation? Yeah. <laughs> you sure did. Mike Rozier back then. By golly. Some of those Nebraska tailbacks. That's right. Big Dane Todd, the fullback, 5'10", the 235 pounder. They, they cheered from Coach Callahan when he went into the eye formation in spring practice. <laughs> well, if he gets things to go the way he wants with this 
form of a red, West Coast offense, I think Nebraska fans will, will forgive. It's all about winning with it. Second, right. second goal from the five. Taylor under pressure. Back at the 16-yard line, John Soldy broke loose from linebacker and got him for a loss of 11. I just think when you're down inside the 10-yard line to take a sack, it's almost inexcusable. And not from the quarterback's perspective, but you know they're going to bring heat. Texas Tech lines up a great scheme that time. Soldy coming off the edge, unblocked. So now it'll be third down 15. From the 15. They have to pass this down. Little time going into the end zone to Franz Hardy. Incomplete, but he was bumped in the end zone. The flag flies. He was being covered by Nazaruddin, and Hardy is down now. This interference, 26 on the defense. Ball spotted at the two yard line. First down. That was inside. It was in the end zone, so it'll go to the two-yard line. Hardy working to the corner, and then Nazaruddin got the push, but it looked like Hardy hurt himself even before he got hit. Yeah, it looks like an ankle. We don't want to prejudge, but that the, the bottom line on that play, we'll check on Franz Hardy, but the bottom line is it gives Nebraska a first down and goal at the two-yard line and yet another penalty for Texas Tech now six for 70 yards in this game so first and goal Nebraska trailing 21 7 Texas Tech offense has been on the field in the last 12 only for three plays here's the handoff it's not going to be good enough for the touchdown Vincent Meeks came up to make the play on Cody Glenn, who had the touchdown earlier. And they want to be careful of the clock. You see it right there, 117 and counting. You really have to hurry up now. Now you want to keep the tempo going, get it in the end zone, and, and yeah, leave Tech with a little bit of time, as, as little as you can leave them feeling good about scoring a touchdown, too. Yeah, with a minute or less than a minute remaining here, Texas Tech also will have no timeouts but that presumes a touchdown they're going to down again bounces outside for the Nebraska touchdown that's two touchdowns in this game for Cody Glenn the first two of his career now we've got a 21 13 and the rumble is on well here's the I formation and it's just a tailback lead and they maul Texas Tech up front that time. Nice job. Everyone's pad levels low. Cody Glenn taking a hit, still getting over for the touchdown. And now we got ourselves a ball game. Here's Condon for the point after. It's good. It's 21 14. It's homecoming here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it looked like this homecoming was going to be a big bust early. Nebraska has won 36 in a row at homecoming, but they got down 21 nothing early in this game. And it, it, the only analogy I can come up with is a freight train out of control downhill. Boy, Texas, and they were coming straight out of Lubbock. I'll tell you, <laughs> Texas Tech really got the first half, putting one, putting up 21 straight points to zero for Nebraska. And it started early, a little screen pass to Terry and Henderson. He made a nice move here to get into the end zone. And Hodges, Cody Hodges, thus far on the day, Bob, 21 of 26, 221 yards, three touchdowns. There's Falani, he catches one of two touchdowns in the first half, and then Zach Taylor handing off to Cody Glenn, the true freshman. Two touchdowns for him. They line up a little eye formation, give those Huskers fans something to yell about, and over for his second touchdown of the day, giving him 14 points. So it's a great ball game right now. Nebraska gets the ball first here in the second half. All right, we're ready to get underway in the second half. 21 to 14. Here is Brandon Jackson. 
out to near the 20 yard line and let's go quickly to Kip Lewis. Hey guys a couple of updates here on the Nebraska sidelines. Corey Ross running back expected to be back in the game. Isaiah Flewellen has a knee or a leg injury. He's not expected back in the game. France Hardy who twisted his ankle down here in the end zone. He is expected back. Now I talked to Mike Leach. He said hey I'm not disappointed about anything. We just have to play harder. That simply said just play harder in the second half. Now Bill Callahan said he loves the way his team played late in the first half there. He said just come back play the same way he said his team was very resilient he was very happy he said keep fighting throughout this game guys thank you Kip and as everybody sees Corey Ross who had a banged up hip is back in there and the pass attempt was for Corey Ross but Zach Taylor was under some intense pressure from Saldi well he was and, and Saldi was there as, as well and you know what they were able to do towards the end of that first half Bob they they protected Zach Taylor very well remember he put a career numbers last week versus Iowa State 431 yards 36 completions I mean he could put the ball in the air but I think more importantly they need Corey Ross to get untracked he has two 100 yard games this year so far for the Huskers on the second down Zach Taylor hit as he throws the balls out of there Texas Tech has fallen on it. And it is Texas Tech ball. Kiana Dawson knocked that ball out of there and that's about the worst thing that could happen to Nebraska as they get possession here in the second half. Oh Dawson Keontae Dawson comes from the throwing side watch him working right there just a great move and just launches into Zach Taylor causing the fumble and the ball you know a lot of times those big offensive linemen don't see the ball scored out and I believe Hudler was the one that recovered it. Chris Hudler boy that's a hit right there yeah it's Hudler goes down on it right there yeah so Texas Tech now a short field I would say first down. first down and this is in the red zone so another chance Texas Tech is perfect on the year Scoring went inside the red zone. And Nebraska's got their backs to the wall. Down 21-14. Opening moments from Memorial Stadium. Crowd calling on this black shirt defense to do something with the Red Raiders. Easier said than done. Hodges, here comes some pressure. And Hodges is going to go down back at the 25. And the heat came that time. Lakeven Smith led the way back there. What they did right before the snap of the ball, they moved down. Watch the defense. They, well, they ended up sliding right before the snap of the ball. And remember Texas Tech using those wide splits, Bob. What I saw towards the end of the first half, Nebraska's defense is sliding their linemen right before the snap of the ball. So it changes the look and the call for those Texas Tech offensive linemen. Right. I think you go back to Olamu. Out of this formation, they like to run right here. Take a look. Hodges straight drop back into the end zone. Nothing there. Hodges is going to go down at the 23 yard line. First man back there, Adam Carricker. There's the pressure. We didn't see that much in the first half. Now, Nebraska's defense came in leading the nation with 26 sacks. Carricker with a spin move gets his sixth sack of the year, and that's, that's just a great effort by number 90. And you heard, you know, Kip Lewis when he talked to Bill Callahan, he said, I love, you know, Nebraska's effort. And they came out playing hard here early in the second half. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt by 21-14, Texas Tech looking for three more. And that is going to be good. 24-14. So Nebraska really dodged a disaster there as the black shirt defense stood up and held Texas Tech to a field goal from their own 20. 24-14 as Texas Tech got the 37-yard field goal from Trelicka after recovering the Zach Taylor fumble at the Nebraska 20-yard line. Trelicka set to kick off now to Tier Green 30 or Brandon Jackson 32 on the right side of your screen. So Texas Tech now on the year 29 trips into the red zone 25 touchdowns and four field goals.
a perfect scoring goal. From the 14 comes Brandon Jackson. He's going to reverse it, cut up the middle, penalty markers everywhere. He's down at the 24. About 10 yards on the return. Corey Ross back in the backfield. Again playing with a sore hip. They're going out of an eye this time. And the front man is Cody Glenn. Out across the 12 goes Corey Ross. Now all of a sudden you got a third and five. It's a very makeable third down in this offense. They have so many routes that go between five and eight yards. Gives yourself a real good chance. They got two wide outs to each side for Zach Taylor. See Texas, uh, Nebraska only one of three on third down conversion. And that one is picked off. Look out. That is Sylvester Brinkley down to the 10. So Zach Taylor fumbled on the last possession at the 20. And here he throws the interception. And Texas Tech is going to get a short field once again. A 20-yard return after the interception by Brinkley. Okay, Sylvester Brinkley's right here. They're trying to get a short post. And watch him. He just falls right into the passing lane. And picks the ball off and you know Zach Taylor never saw Sylvester Brinkley if you can believe that 6'4 230 pounder you never see that guy that's his second interception of the year Brinkley oh boy the uh, Nebraska offense giving the black shirt defense challenge after challenge last time they held Texas Tech out of the end zone it will be tough here from just outside the town Hodges, that is complete right about the six yard line. Gain of four or five to Bristol Olamua. What a crucial turnover. Man. You know, if you're Zach Taylor, all of a sudden you had third and five. You don't see a linebacker. That, that's a. That's big a mistake. tough one. Big that's mistake. A, no that's a, way to say that's, that's a big mistake. Yeah. And, and as you said, you know, this high flying offense, when they get going, just give them a little fuel. Yeah, it's, it's a nightmare for a Boy. defensive coordinator. Second down and four. From the five, Texas Tech could get a first down inside the one yard line. Okay, Hodge, here comes the pressure, and Hodges just throws it away. It was Danny Amendola was the intended receiver, and Hodges threw it away because he was about to be run over. Adam Carricker there to apply the pressure that time, and you said he really got rid of it in a hurry. Big number 90 bearing down on him, and you know that first half Texas Tech they, definitely the train was on the track right here if you're tech crucial third down even though you can get a first down you're really third and goal. Yeah and you wonder with Mike Leach if they'll just go ahead and go for four for four here. Texas Tech has never not scored inside the 20 Shannon Woods in the game now for Hodges Hodges is going to be knocked down at the eight-yard line, loss of about three. He was hit by Blake Tiedke on the blitz. Now you see Mike Leach. Uh, let's wonder what's going through that month. Well, and Leach is not. He didn't send the kicking team on the field right away. Uh, again, the pressure, Tiedke coming from the free safety position. And Nebraska is moving the defensive front a lot before the snap of the ball now. Bob, I think they're going to have to keep blitzing in the second half. Yeah. Keep Cody Hodges off balance. Three sacks here yep. in this period. So Trelika is in for the field goal attempt. It will be one of 26 yards. And remember, they blocked one in the first half. Gets that one off and through. And it's 27 14. And once again, credit this Nebraska defense. They've had a field of less than 20 yards two consecutive times here and given up only two field goals. So Nebraska's black shirt defense did a solid for the offense there. On two occasions, they held Texas Tech out of the end zone, gave up two field goals after two Zach Taylor turnovers. Here is the kickoff. It is going to come down to Brandon Jackson right about his five-yard line. He's finding a little room, squirting around the bodies down there, and Jackson finds his way all the way out to the 33-yard line. Lance Fuller made the tackle. Big hitter. Play fake to Corey Ross. Throwing right side. Mulkey is open for a gain of about four yards over to the right side. It was Huffman who came up to make the play. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. And 
that first and 10 line is going to be right between the 47 and 48 yard line of Texas Tech leading 27 14 509 to go in the third quarter from Lincoln Nebraska Bob Neal Tom Ramsey Kip Lewis with you homecoming at Nebraska where they've won their last 36 homecoming games in a row but this year they get Texas Tech can ruin anybody's party. That's right. Taylor has made a wide open right across the middle. That's a first down with a little more to the 42 yard line. Dwayne Slay came up to make the hit on the tight end. J.B. Phillips, number 85, a gain of 11. You know, every time Nebraska breaks someone free, the tackling of Texas Tech is so good. Lyle Sutton, such a defensive coordinator, coaches a linebacker. He also has on his staff one of the great ones of all time out of Michigan. Dave Brown, 16 years in the NFL, perennial all pro in the Seahawks ring of honor. And he said to me before the game, he said, Tom, we got some players now. First down 10 inside Texas Tech territory. Another open receiver. It is complete at the 35, about two yards short of the first down to Mark LaFleur, number nine, gain of eight on that play. And the challenge for Nebraska when you're facing a team of good tacklers and people that know their position so well, you got to be close to perfection. And, and Nebraska knew that coming in. They had up-tempo practices. Bill Callahan there really coaches tempo during practice, during games. He knows it's uphill a lot of times during the game. And Texas Tech really bringing a lot of heat so far today with their front four. On second and two, they're going to run it with Cody Glenn. He almost broke out of that. He did get the first down, did the freshman, who's proving to have himself a pretty good ball game here as Corey Ross is not able to go all the way running back with a sore hip gain of five Cody Glenn the true freshman from Rusk Texas big kid played on the division 3A level down in Texas over 6300 yards and 87 touchdowns in high school look at those his eyes he is enthusiastic he wants that ball again well he'll get his chance Taylor has another open man close to the first down Right at the 21 yard line is Mark LaFleur. That's a gain of nine. And LaFleur just made his fourth catch of the day. And he's gained 45 yards on receptions. Well, you just, you know, this is a great route. Just a nice pattern. You got a guy underneath going out to the flat. LaFleur sits down in the hole right there. When Zach Taylor has time, he's as dangerous as any passer in the country. He throws the ball with precision. Now second down and nine, uh, second down and one at the 21. Let's see if Bill Callahan and Zach Taylor try to go for the money here. They don't exactly have a down to waste, but it's a good opportunity. They're just going to try to get the first down as they throw out here to Nate Smith. And he's got the first down, but just barely, just barely. Sylvester Brinkley come up to make the play. So Nebraska on the drive here. Inside the 20 to the 19 yard line first down and 10 trailing 27 14 going to run it out of the eye this time Corey Ross back in stutter steps his way to the 15 yard line give him about four tackle made by Nazaruddin who came up from the secondary that's kind of cool if we had broadband access we, we could actually actually get scores and highlights but someone unplugged the computer today <laughs> that's right our computer went the only problem with our, our culture our modern world is boy if the computer goes down it's adios unless it's us and we're that's using right. some real brain power up here <laughs> not us <laughs> the help second down and six for Nebraska Play fake, rolling right. Taylor with a lot of time. Into the arms for a touchdown of Terrence Nunn. Touchdown, Nebraska. A 15-yard scoring strike. Well executed. Terrence Nunn gets the touchdown catch. You said it, Bob. A little fake going left play action watch Zach Taylor wait 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 for Terrence Nunn and Terrence Nunn comes streaking across the field from the other side and they worked that one in practice they knew they couldn't track Terrence Nunn all the way across the field Terrence Nunn's first touchdown of the year Jordan Congdon for the point after and we've got a ball game here 27 20 Texas Red Raiders led 21 Nothing, then 27 14. Now, Nebraska within six. 
This is the closest Nebraska has been since 313 in the first quarter. Down now, only six. We have Danny Amendola, number 20. Number 21, Shannon Woods, about to take a kickoff from Jay Wish. And Amendola can't hold on to it, so he's going to have to touch it back. And Texas Tech will come out to the 20. Boy, that, Leach that, knows where to find him. He won't have to adjust to a high-scoring offense. Little screen to the left side. Look out. Out to the 38-yard line goes Joel Falani. Nicely set up and nicely done. 19-yard game. Falani had a huge first half, catching a couple scores. And again, just underneath. Watch the patience in this offense. Nice little, kind of a little tunnel screen right there. And a, just catching the ball, not a not a huge throw down the field, but boy, it becomes huge yardage right away. Stuart Bradley is down and being helped off the field by Nebraska trainers. Wobbly. And you know that last drive of Nebraska, Bob? Zach Taylor, seven for seven, 59 yard drive. Boy, and he was flawless. And that brings him to 18 of 30 on the day for 210 yards. He has thrown two interceptions and lost a fumble one TD pass and Hodges has only been two of seven in this third quarter first and ten from the 39 Nebraska doing some stemming penalty markers down I believe the the clock read 63 moved it's a false start that's Manuel Ramirez and as you mentioned earlier, the crowd noise doesn't hurt. They call him Biscuit. 6'4", 3'40". Is it 27-21? Huskers down six to the leading scoring offensive team in the nation. Welcome back to TBS Saturday College Football presented by Orbitz. Score 27-21. Third down eight. Texas Tech from the 44 after the fumble that's popped into the air as he was hit and the ball has popped loose into the hands of Texas Tech that is Bo Rude who fumbles it into the hands of Nebraska I should say but he got the ball it is a fumble and Nebraska turned right around and got the ball back the hit is what set that up to pop the ball into the air and Rude gets it all the way to the nine Adam Carricker coming off the edge Jason Jay Moore and then Rude Jay Moore was the one that hit his arm and the ball pops right into Rude's hand Rude's never gonna live it down he got run down by a lineman 290 pounder at that he got 38 yards on the return before he went down, though. And Nebraska, I was about to comment after the fumble on the pass reception about how quickly the game could turn. Yeah. It looks like they may review this. Yeah. You, you know, his arm never started in motion. Now, you, you see, it just was beginning, but Moore pops it out right there. The ball's out. I guess they're going to say the ball went forward. That may have something to do. And they say, no, it was a fumble. Yeah. That's that was a pretty call. easy call, I think, yeah. yeah. So I was going to say how quickly games turn. Nebraska on the drive, the fumble after the reception, and then just like that, they get it back. i got to tell you how nice it is. It's nice to have these replay officials. They turn that around pretty quick. I think in college football today, a wise decision by going with replay. And Jay Moore, how about this? Two sacks, two tackles for a loss, and a big forced fumble. First down 10 Nebraska at the 14 yard line after Jay Moore called Cody Hodges to fumble. Here's the handoff. It's Corey Ross picking his way. He's caught from behind at the three. Got a first down though. Keanu Dawson. How about that speed by a defensive lineman? A gain of 17, and Nebraska has it. First down goal. Well, offset eye. They come through. Dane Todd, the big fullback, gets a nice block on Dwayne Slay, the free safety. Corey Ross springing 
right up the middle of that Texas Tech defense. And you said it, Dawson. What a, what a great play by him, tracking Corey Ross down. Now it's down to third down and goal from the four. Little lob into the end zone. Terrence Nunn. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, it's something you work on over and over in practice. They were working it to perfection the other day. Terrence Nunn going up high, and he came down with one foot in bounds. Nice play. Great catch by Terrence Nunn. Here's the point after attempt by Condon. And Nebraska has come from a 21-0 deficit to take the lead with 10-10 to go at homecoming in Lincoln. First time Texas Tech has trailed this late in the ball game, so that must be some shock for them as Bill Callahan's Nebraska Cornhuskers capitalized on the fumble by Hodges, took it 14 yards and scored and lead 28-27. Jake Wesh to kick off, Amendola 20 and Johnson number nine back deep. The ball is bobbled at the 10. That's Amendola, and he's wrestled down and out of bounds at the 16 by Jake Peets. First and 10, Texas Tech, nation's number one scoring offense. That pass thrown behind the intended receiver. That was Jared Hicks. And now it's time for our answer to our Aflac trivia question. Torin Henderson needs one reception for the NCAA running back record. Who is currently number one? You knew that. Mark Templeton of Long Beach State. <laughs> he had 262 career receptions. The 49ers, Long Beach State. Second down 10 from the 16. They don't have a program anymore. How would I remember? That's right. I didn't want to put you out on the limb there. Cody Hodges. Went across the middle. He is batted down right at the point of throw Jay Moore once again back in there Jay Moore he's got a forced fumble he's got two sacks he's got two tackles for loss Jay Moore has had his motor running the whole game and a moment ago Kip Lewis talked about don't flinch Courtney Grigsby is going to be back about his 35 yard line Bob, yeah, I'm sorry. One thing that Nebraska did the last time they were in punt return formation, they left one of the gunners wide open. And, and I think if they were to do it again, I mean, they, they had two guys run in to try and block the kick, and they left the guy wide open. And I'm telling you, in, in the NFL, the punter's good enough and smart enough. He'll pick the ball, just throw it out there. Alex Reyes wasn't looking the last time. On fourth down after the penalty, fourth and six. Reyes hits a line drive. This is very returnable. From the 38, Grigsby gets a block on the outside and knocked out of bounds inside Nebraska territory at the 39 and a half yard line by Serdon Lewis Grigsby. Got an 18 yard return on a 42 yard punt. Nebraska with the lead, 28-27. First and 10 from the 11. Keep it on the ground. This is the freshman Marlon Lucky to about the six yard line. Fletcher Sessions, the middle linebacker, comes up to make the play. Well, Nebraska's defense coming in, 26 sacks on the day. Five sacks in the second half alone was the Nebraska defense and really created the short field for their offense. I was just going to ask you what has been the trend on the turnaround here, and you just knew. It's magical almost. Yeah. Corey Ross back in there. Play fake to Ross. Taylor throwing into the end zone, but he had to get rid of it too soon because he was under significant pressure. The pass was intended for Josh Mueller or Terrence Nunn down there. 
Yeah, they like Mueller too. Big target, 6'5, 240 pounder. Third down five from the six yard line. Nebraska, what do they do if they don't score here? Well, let's wait and see if they do score to bring up the question. Corey Ross hit in the backfield. He's going to lose about three or four. And Hudler comes up to make the play, and they are answering the question before I ask it as Nebraska comes on for a field goal attempt with their freshman kicker. Jordan Condon from San Diego, California, is 7 of 10 on field goals this year. His longest 38 yards. This will be from 27. Holder is the punter, Sam Cook. It is down, it is good, and Nebraska leads by four. 31-27, but for Texas Tech, five minutes and 10 seconds is an eternity. We have a beauty, 5-10 to go in the game. Jake Wesh about to kick off to either Danny Amendola or Robert Johnson. Well, there's a lot of numbers. Texas Tech, when they score 30 plus points, they usually win. When they're 29 or less, Bob, they're 8 and 18 under Mike Leach. How about this? 31 27. It's right on the cusp. <laughs> By the way, if the lead holds for Nebraska, it would be University of Nebraska's largest comeback in school history. It was hard to come back when they ran the ball all the time. We were here. If they can hold on. That's a big if. Five minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Red Raiders have only one time out left, by the way. Amendola's going to take it at the four-yard line. One tackle was missed, and he got outside and was finally banged out at the 30. Joey Robinson got down there. Nebraska has stifled the Texas Tech offense here in the second half. But it can break loose at any time. I mean, they're throwing it all the time. Here's Hodges, got rid of it. What a catch! Out at the 40, down to the 36-yard line by Joel Filani. He went up high to grab it and pull it in. Well, that's way one way to go over 300 yards for the day. Filani has had a monster day, two touchdowns. Watch him, he's gonna just run the post. And what, what a great throw. And more importantly, Filani just had great position on the defender. Not even a chance that ball getting defense by Nebraska. First down 10 from the 36 yard line of the Cornhuskers. Crowd once again getting into this for the black shirt defense facing the nation's number one scoring offense. That's a first down to the 26 yard line. Bristol Oluma. Ola Uma got that catch. Can I try that again? Ola Mua. <laughs> and Mike Leach. Facing a deficit in the fourth quarter for the first time this year with his Red Raiders. This will be first down 10 from the 26. And again, Nebraska's defense got a little bit away from jamming the pass rush at the line of scrimmage. Moving their guys again now. I expect them to blitz. Here they come. Here they come. Hodges goes down at the 37. Bo Rude was there. Loss of 11. Well, Bo Root, the younger brother of Barrett Root, top tackler in Nebraska history, and McEwen there to turn Hodges into Root. And I'll tell you, that, that's good playmaking on defense right there. Now remember, down and distance, doesn't matter with Tech. <laughs> yeah. They just reload. Second and 19, clock ticking down to 3.30, remaining in this game. 31-27, Tech will need a touchdown. Comes across the middle to Jared Hicks, two or three missed tackles, and Hicks gets it to the 22. The line to make for the first down is the 16. Daniel Bullocks came up to make the play. Our first and 10 line brought to you by Napa. That's where they got to go. 
You said at that time a couple missed tackles Bob real costly for the Nebraska defense they had they had Hicks wrapped up third down eight now third down has been a mess for Texas Tech today they are one for eight on third down conversions and this will be two down territory quickly across the middle a shoestring tackle pass was to Olamua he nearly broke that tackle he got close to but not enough for the first down a gain of six 223 you have to go for it here on fourth down the way Nebraska has controlled the clock here in the second half fourth down two you might say it'll come down to this with two minutes to go in the game Texas Tech has converted once on their only fourth down other fourth down try of the day and they're three for three on the year on fourth down Hodges has his man it is complete to Falani at the 12 yard line first down at the 12 for Texas Tech minute 51 to go in the game so who do they go after they go after the converted running back here Tierra Green Falani big body guy good position again Tier Green unable to come up and disrupt the reception. Yeah, Tier Green listed at 6-1, but you saw the tremendous difference in height between him and Olamua. Texas Tech has had to settle for a field goal their last two times inside the 20. First down 10 from the 12 here. And they have Olamua isolated up top. Hodges has time. It's intercepted. Now fumbled. And Texas Tech comes back with the ball. Oh my. The calmness of Mike Leach and staff. Lakeven Smith has the interception. The ball gets tipped, batted at the line of scrimmage. Lakeven Smith, Lakeven Smith was in pass defense, and he got hammered. And Danny Amendola goes down to cover the ball. Yep. Oh, wow. Um, McEwen was the one that batted the ball up in the air. Lakeven Smith fumbled it, but he was hit hard. I believe it was Brian Keegan's Kagan's. And first down right across the middle. The pass is complete at the 11 yard line to Joel Falani, gain of seven. Kagan's was a backup guard, Bob. He was the one that rocked. Smith and jarred the ball loose that could be easily be the play of the game and catch this the clock is running it's 44 yep. in the game yep. 44 seconds so Nebraska will have nearly no time left if the Red Raiders score the touchdown Hodges is going to hand it off to Henderson he stopped at the line of scrimmage right about the 10 he got close to the first down it was second down and about three let's see where they spot his forward progress Gain of about one, I think. And it's time for our Levi's game summary. And that says it. We're talking about the great day Hodges has had and a good day in the clutch when they've needed it from Taylor. Both quarterbacks have turned it over. 27 seconds. And, and now let's go to uh, what Nebraska's prop uh, concept of defense will be right here. Down and one. You can virtually be assured they'll pass the ball. Not totally for sure. Do you blitz them? I think they run the ball here. You do? I think Tech runs the ball here. So no. So the answer is no. You don't blitz them. Maybe you run. No, I think you do blitz. Yeah. I, I think you do blitz. I think you got to come after him. Kevin Gott, Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator, working against Mike Leach, head coach and offensive strategist for the Red Raiders. Texas Tech has converted only one time out of nine on third down conversion attempts. Hodges, he's going to throw it. He's under attack. He's into the end zone. Throws it away. Well, I don't know whether he's going to run it or throw it. Oh, boy. Falani was the intended receiver there. So if you're Mike Leach, 19 seconds. If you're Mike Leach, with the clock where it is, you, you almost have to go to the end zone. It, it's dicey here. So it's fourth down and one. 
If the black shirt defense rises up here, it won't matter. Well, if Tech had a timeout, they would call it. And but they instead, did. they're helped oh, out by Nebraska, Nebraska who calls the timeout. Call exactly. There's Kevin Cosgrove, the architect of the Nebraska defense, and this will be their biggest play of the day, obviously. Dare I say it's all down to this. Texas Tech two of two on fourth down conversions today. Now they can convert this and still not get it into the end zone with only 19 seconds left. And Tech with two backs. Bob. Well, they have Woods back there with Henderson. Hodges, quick drop, can't find anybody. Rolling and looking into the end zone. Touchdown, Falani. Texas Tech. Joel Falani, who's had a career day here today. With 12 seconds left, the Red Raiders lead it by two, and this crowd went silent. What a throw. And again, Hodges using his feet, staying alive. And Falani, the big bodied receiver, 6'3, 222, coming down with, well, easily said, probably the biggest catch of his young career. Sure. That's his third touchdown catch today. 11 catches for 163 yards. 34 31. Well, credit the quarterback, credit the offensive line. He keeps the play alive right there. And that's just knowing where a receiver's coming from because he's not the first choice here. Hodges gets pushed. Titus Adams pushes him out of the pocket. He looked two places before he found his oh, yeah. receiver. Falani beats Blake oh, Tietke. Man, that is a catch. Listen, Third touchdown of the day. Listen to the quietness, if there's such a word to say. <laughs> it's been a great ball game. Now they're trying to build it again in 12 seconds. Hey, stranger things have happened. There's Tier Green. Here's their best returner. Brandon Jackson is 32, standing to his left. With only 12 seconds left, not much hope here. The ball blows off the tee, and you can hear a pin drop. As a matter of fact, I could hear the ball fall off the tee. Boy, up here. Boy. And we've got, a, we've got a beauty coming up right after this on TBS. UCLA, California, Pasadena, they're both undefeated. I thought this game might go into OT. We came close. But what, you know, you mentioned earlier about Nebraska having to hurry a little bit with the clock, yep. even when they were driving to yep. score. And uh, they did, and as it, uh, they did not uh, hurry it that much, and they ran out of time here with 12 seconds. So they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line, and Zach Taylor will need a miracle. And, and that's a huge kickoff by Trelicka, putting it out of the end zone. Yeah. You make them go the distance now. I, I think if you're Nebraska, you're trying to get big chunks of yardage, but you're playing into the teeth of this Tech defense. Their safeties are their best players on the field. Vincent Meeks, Dwayne Slay, the two safeties back. They're back nearly 30 yards deep, too, in that secondary. Here's Taylor. He's got some time. Comes to Swift, who drops the ball out at the 49-yard line. Boy, a catch there, and there's new life. Now only five yep. seconds. Yep. And they need a field goal. They need a field goal to tie. That would have been a huge, huge catch if Swift would have come down with that. Uh, the time is running so quickly. The clock already with five seconds. Yep. He wasn't out of bounds. Yep. They could have called a timeout perhaps, but but it's uh, it's about down to this for Nebraska. A very game Nebraska team. Taylor comes right across the middle, gets it into the hands, and he laterals hit Corey Ross to Terrence Nunn. There is a loose ball, and it looked like a flag may have gone down there. No, they're just running it out. It was just the bean marker to spot the ball. The time has expired, and the Texas Tech Red Raiders have defeated the Cornhuskers. Nebraska 34 to 31 in as good a ball game as you can find. Kip Lewis. Hey Bob, I'm with Tech quarterback Cody Hodges. Cody, you guys got off to a great start, but did this game end sort of in the fashion you guys expected? Uh, you know, Nebraska, they played tough the whole time. We got up 21-0 and they kept fighting. You know, a lot of teams would probably lay down and die, but they kept, you know, they kept fighting hard, extremely hard the second half. Uh, you know, my hat's off to them. We're lucky to get a win. You know, we kind of, we're lucky, so we'll take it. Talk about the pride and the poise you guys showed coming down that last drive. Uh, you know, we just feel like regardless how much time's on the clock that we can score. Regardless if we got to go 80 yards or 20, we feel like we can score. Um, O-line played well, gave me enough time. 
in that last play, Joe Falani just, you know, continued his route, and I just threw it up for him. So he deserves, he deserves a lot of credit. Take us through that last touchdown play there. Uh, uh, we run that every day in practice uh, for situations like this. Uh, really, Joel's just supposed to have a slant on the right side. I scrambled left, and he just continued his route. I got hit as I threw, threw it up. He made a great catch. All right, Cody, thanks. Congratulations. Bob, back up to you. For Tom Ramsey, Kip Lewis, and the rest of our TBS crew, I'm Bob Neal saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. And now let's join Ernie Johnson in our Atlanta studios.